Hi folks, Spidey's back for another movie review tonight. You know, it's really raining here in Minneapolis. I think it's about ready to start snowing. But before I get to my movie review, I want to dedicate this to Kara C and to Kara K. Two dedications tonight, how about that, huh? Yes, I am kind of weird. <laughs> uh, anyway, we're going to be talking about one of my all-time favorite movies tonight. You know, a lot of people are scoffing at my uh, YouTube uh, webcast, but... You know, I'm trying to do the best I can, you know, with my limited resources and things like that. Eventually, we're going to take this out onto the street and do some, like, pranks and stuff like that. And we're going to expand this whole particular uh, webcast, other than just our studio right here. So, anyway, let's talk about tonight's movie. You know, a lot of people think I'm boring, by the way. I don't think I'm boring. I think I'm actually quite funny. <laughs> I try to put a little humor into these webcasts, and I get a lot of snide remarks from people who think I'm boring or they're too long or I'm wasting my time. You know, folks, I just do this for fun. I just do this to entertain you, to educate you, maybe bring a smile to your face. You know, if you people want to be mean to me, that's fine, you know. At least I have the uh, ability to do something like this, and I'm not afraid. So <laughs> enough of that. Enough of the rants. Okay. Okay, we're going to talk about one of my favorite movies of all time. came out in 1948. It has monsters in it, but they're all very humorous and very funny. I actually have two different versions of this movie. Now, a lot of people, uh, the purists scoff at this type of a movie, you know, because it isn't uh, horror-oriented. But it is horror-oriented, but it's, it's oriented, but it does have a lot of humor in it. And I'm talking about Frankenstein. I'm talking about Abbott and Con Con Let me start that over. Abbott and Costello meet Frankenstein, 1948. Now, of course, it's black and white. You can't get this movie on Blu-ray, by the way. It came out maybe a couple years ago on Blu-ray. This is one of my all-time favorite movies. I know it's silly, it's goofy, uh, but, you know, I happen to love this movie, you know, because it was kind of like at the end of all their careers, these particular people who starred in this movie, who oh, listen to that rain, I think we're going to have a snowstorm tonight. Anyway, we have uh, Lon Chaney Jr. as the Wolfman, Bela Lugosi as uh, Dracula, Glenn Strange as Frankenstein Monster, uh, Lenore Abbott, Abbott as uh, uh, Bela Lugosi's assistant. You know, they're both, uh, want, they want uh, Costello's brain. <laughs> you know, see who else we have in this movie. You know, oh, actually, Vincent Price has a cameo at the very end, you know, as the Invisible Man. Uh, there's a lot of good people in this uh, this movie. I ha I happen to love this movie a lot. It came out in 1940. It, it's it's actually got a lot of good humor. You know, I think everybody's very believable in this movie. Even though they're all kind of coming to the end of their careers, you know, we're talking about the late 40s. I think most of them start to fizzle out a little bit, you know, in the 50s and the 60s. So, uh, but that's okay because. You know, they're all my idols, you know, Abin Costello and all the rest of the monsters and everything, you know. And, and uh, you know, Glenn Strange is really good as the Frankenstein monster. Bella Lugosi, he's getting a little aged in this movie, you know, but he still does a pretty good job, you know. He's still creepy, you know. Abin Costello, our Abin Costello, what more can you say there, you know. And, uh, of course, uh, Lon Chaney Jr., you know, his tormented uh, werewolf, Wolfman, <laughs> you know, look on his face, you know, he's looking up at this full moon, you know, with his eyebrows raised, you know, just basically just dreading uh, the rising of the moon, you know, but, you know, it's, it's, this movie is completely played for laughs, you know, and a lot of, I do understand a lot of people dislike this movie when they try to compare it to the older, uh, Universal horror movies, you know, the the peers say this is a piece of junk, and I disagree with them completely. I give this movie just as high as rating as any of those particular movies. Maybe even a higher rating, because I, I like that. You know, the movie is really atmospheric. You know, it's got, you know, it's got a great castle. It's got, uh, oh, God, oh God, all kinds of creepy stuff in the wax museum. Uh, lots of thunder and rain, just like we're having here. It has a lot of good elements in this movie. You know, it's very well done. You know, and I, I really, uh, I wish, <laughs> I wish they would have made more of these movies. I think this was actually Abbott uh, and Costello's best movie. You know, they, they, they fought the mummy, you know, they fought the Invisible Man, they fought uh, Jekyll and Hyde, you know, and stuff like that. And But I actually think this movie is their crowning achievement. I, I 
and seriously, in at least in these horror movies, when they they started with uh, horror icons in these comedies of you know the the forties and the fifties, the thirties, forties, fifties, whatever it might be, you know. So, I, you know, when people tell me they this movie sucks, I just tell them you suck. <laughs> This movie's a great... In fact, I might watch this movie again tonight. You know, this is one of my, my favorite movies for late night watching. Now you're laying in bed, you know, and you want something funny, maybe a little horror oriented. This is a perfect movie, you know, just lay in bed and, you know, and just sit and, you know, fall asleep to this movie and just, you know, I've seen all these scenes hundreds of times, you know, I've seen this movie probably, oh God, I can't even imagine how many times I've seen this movie. It's a good late night movie. In fact, it's a good movie for any time of the day. No, I particularly at night, of course, because the movie's mainly f filmed at night. In fact, I think it is mainly filmed at night, except maybe the very beginning, when uh, Avon Costello, uh, uh, our clerks at this mail or post office uh, center, or whatever you want to call it, you know, and McDougal, uh, Frank McDougal, comes and claims his uh, his uh, prizes, uh, the body of uh, Frankenstein and the body of uh, Dracula. You know, he won in some kind of a European raffle or something, and he's I can't I can't remember the guys. Uh, Charles is. I can't remember the guy who plays this guy, but he's great, man. He's always up and tense and pissed off and everything, and Lou Costello is just giving him a hard time at the baggage uh, center where he was claiming he has the ticket for it because he, he won a raffle over to Europe, like I just said, you know, and he's really good at this. McDougal's House of Horror, because he, he has a wax museum, and he's, these are going to be two of his additions to the wax museum, but he doesn't... He doesn't really realize that these two, uh, Frank the Science Director, are actually alive inside their crates, their coffins, whatever, you know. Because uh, they just, uh, it's a pretty cool movie. Glenn Strange, I think, is pretty good in the Frank the Science Director. You know, he actually did a pretty good job in these movies, uh, this particular movie, Glenn Strange. Uh, you know, he was big lumbering, you know, he was, you know. The movie has a lot of funny elements into it, you know. I mean, there is not really... Too much horror, or too many, too much scary, too many scary scenes. It's basically pretty much a, a comedy horror movie, you know. I think it's one of the best, basically. I don't think, you know, this ranks right up there with the best horror comedies of all time, you know. Whether you like it or don't like it, you know. But I'm just giving you my opinion, you know, because it's one of my favorite movies of all time. <laughs> Lon Chaney, of course, is. Uh, see, who is that one lady that plays? That's uh, no, not. I can't think of her name. Oh, anyway, she's uh, like uh, some kind of a postal inspector. She there's a lot of people involved in this movie. You know, they they want to find out where the the monster and the vampire went. So, you know, they all get traced back to the castle where uh, uh, this young scientist is working on. I don't know scientific stuff. Who knows? <laughs> you know, of course, Bella Gosi lives there. Dracula, and they want to take. Lou Costello's brain and put it in the Frankenstein monster because they need a brain that's kind of like docile and kind of like, you know, mellow and everything and kind of goofy like Lou Costello. So, you know, the whole plot is basically around that part, you know. That's that's really what the plot of the movie is. Uh, uh, Lenore uh, Albert? 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 Uh, she's European, whatever. She's pretty cute. And she uh, she's in cahoots with Bella Lugosi, Dracula, to, to operate on, uh, you know, Lou Costello, take his brain, put it inside the Frankenstein monster. So, you know, it's all lots of hijinks and stuff in this movie. There's lots of funny spots, you know. There's great dialogue by everybody. Everybody seems to know their line really good in this movie, which I really like. Now, I have actually two versions of this movie. It's in this, fr this uh, ooh, my nose itches. Oh, my God. Yeah. It's actually, I got one version in this one, the Frankenstein Collection, the Universal one that came out recently, the remastered versions. This is one of the movies because it's, of course, Evan Costello made Frankenstein. And I also have it, and uh, this is remastered, by the way. I don't, I should get it on Blu-ray, too. And I also have it in this Evan Costello Collection, too, of some of their better movies, uh, Meet Frankenstein. And this, I think there's like six or eight movies in this particular collection, and they're, they're in this collection, too. Either either versions are fine. The the quality is pretty decent. You know, you don't have to worry about. Uh, they all been remastered. You know, uh, even though they're not Blu-ray, they still look pretty darn sharp on your TV. You know, you don't have to have Blu-ray. You know, unless you can buy a really cheap uh, Blu-ray player, which they are very cheap nowadays. And Blu-rays, you know, I, I buy them used off Amazon anyway or eBay. You know, so I'm not too worried about. I never buy anything from. The big chain stores located here in uh, my superhero city, Minneapolis. 
you know, they're too expensive. I just buy everything used because I get a much, much better deal from Amazon or eBay or whatever I may buy it from. You know, mail order. I mainly do a mail order because it's quick, cheap, and it's fairly fast. You know, if you can wait four or five days for the mail to be delivered, voila, there's your movie or there's your clothing or your mask or whatever it might be. For uh, Clubber back there, he needs a lombati, that lombotomy. That's what he needs. And then, of course, we got... Uh, they're all sleeping, by the way, except for Clubber. He's uh, he's viewing my professionalism, you know, so he knows I'm the best. So he's such a smug asshole, anyway. And then, of course, uh, we have our new uh, Reaper. You guys saw him a couple nights ago? Was he not creepy or creepy? Oh, my God. He just wandered off the street into our webcast studio maybe about five days ago and introduced I guess Clubber, he's a friend of Clubber back there he did introduce himself and he decided he wanted to be part of this webcast in some form or another so we said why not he's a psychopath but you know he is kind of entertaining and creepy not my cup of tea but you know he's loved by Clubber and you know Butcher and uh, Pennywise hates his guts but uh, uh, you know, and uh, Michael Myers and Leatherhead, of course, they love him because he's uh, kind of like a messed up, bloody, not really a zombie clown, but a disgusting pig. That's what he is. <laughs> you know, he's, he was he was uh, licking his cleaver a couple nights ago. In fact, I have that cleaver here. It's really disgusting. He was licking blood off his cleaver a couple nights ago during his like 10 minute introduction here to the webcast viewers. So enough with him. I don't even know when he's coming back. He's he's kind of really bizarre. <laughs> He did get a lot of views uh, on uh, Facebook and uh, YouTube. He seems to be kind of being well received by the public, you know. Either you love this guy or you despise him. Either you, you think he's cool or you're just horrified of him, you know. So just just forget it. Just, just take it with a grain of salt. Whatever the fuck that means. <laughs> anyway, back to the movie. Now, how long are we into this webcast? Oh, my God, we got to get going. It's already about 15 minutes. God. Time really flies when you're having just a great old time. Oh, anyway. Uh, anyway, Evan Costello. You know, I, I really like these guys. You know, I did. I was, you know, pretty much too young. I was not even born when these guys were around. But, you know, I still grew up, you know, watching these guys, you know, in the 60s, 70s as a young kid and teenager and stuff like that. So, you know, this kind of stuff kind of gets entrenched in your brain certain aspects from previous eras that you basically, uh, eras that you previously, uh, you viewed on Saturday afternoon TV or whatever it might be, or, you know, you reruns and stuff like that. This stuff is still airing, by the way, on all kinds of different channels, you know, Avon Costello, Three Stooges, you know, uh, Laurel Hardy, the whole, the whole schmear of them, those people, you know, those, 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 uh, those, uh, icons from, uh, a previous era. They're still great today, you know. I don't care if anybody says about that. They're still fun to watch. You know, I'm not just in today's horror movies. I'm into a lot of things going way back 20, 30, 40 years. You know, it does not make any difference. If it's well done and I like it, it's going to get my collection. But here, here's, here's, I don't know, I can't, really can't see the box art because there's no box art in there because this is a combination set. But anyway, this movie, I think, ranks as one of the best movies comedy horror movies of all time. I don't, you know, don't send me any, don't send me any nasty comments. Don't give me no thumbs down either <laughs> on my YouTube channel because you don't know what you're talking about. I do. I've been watching movies since I was like a teenager. You know, I used to own like a thousand different uh, VHS uh, cassettes and uh, conventional DVDs, Blu-rays, everything. So, I know movies, you know, and I can tell you if it's good or bad, or if it's got some good points to it, some bad points to it, if the special effects are good, you know, or, or you know, stuff like that, you know. I'm actually honest and blunt right to the point. That's why people hate my guts. <laughs> because I just tell the truth, you know. Uh, a lot of people want to just smash my head in with a baseball bat. Aluminum or wood? What would you think? Aluminum bat or a, a wooden bat? You be the choice. You be the. You be the. You make that decision. <laughs> I don't give a fuck. Uh, anyway. Well, anyway, here's nice nah, Frankenstein. Anyway, let's rate this movie. Now, you know what? Like I said a couple nights ago, what I really like about Universal movies back in that era was the black and white 
black and white uh, photography, you know, the filmmaking. I just, I just think that let that made it look a little more creepy, atmospheric. He had better, uh, nice sets and everything, universal sets, you know, on the universal uh, uh, lot and everything like that. They just made, I think, made better movies back then. You know, at least when it comes to this type of genre. Well, of course, all kinds of movies look really good, too. Universal movies were filmed in black and white, but I like their movies because they're filmed in black and white because they did, they tend to they tend to kind of look a little more creepy and atmospheric, which kind of draws you in a little bit more. You kind of can see some of the effects a little bit better because I'm not sure, compared to color, if they... I think it's a little sharper looking at, in certain spots, you know. Maybe, maybe it's because black and white, you know, something like that. But I do like those movies a lot. I have almost every one in my collection, you know, the horror icons and stuff like that. So let's give this movie a rating. Okay, I'm just going to hold this up for comparison. It's Even though the, the movie is in this uh, four-disc set, it is in there, trust me. Anybody who uh, owns this knows exactly what I'm talking about. So we're going to give Abbott Costello, oh, I'm going to give them an eight. That's a kind of a high rating, maybe an eight and a half. I'm going to give this movie an eight and a half. I can't quite go f a full ten, but we're going to do this an eight and a half because... Oh, fuck this shit. Let's, let's, let's give it a nine. I'm going to give it a nine. How many people will complain about a nine rating? I don't care what you think. It's, it's what I think is important, don't you think? This is my webcast. <laughs> and I'm looking good in my suit, and I am the king. <laughs> Hate me or love me. That's the way it is, bull. folks. Yeah. <laughs> so we're going to give Abbott Costello and me Frankenstein a 9 out of 10 spider webs. So uh, I wish I could give it a 10. I can't quite go a 10. Yeah, I should go a 10, but, but I'm not going to because... You know, I don't know. I, I probably would tell people it's a 10, but I'm going to stick with a 9. Just for just for right now, just for the webcast review and stuff like that. Uh, if you want to comment on the comment box below, either in the Facebook page or the YouTube uh, comment box, feel free to. I might try to stick a trailer in so you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. For those of you who haven't seen this movie... And I cannot believe that some of you haven't seen this movie at one point in your life. Uh, it's like a it's like a gem to me. So anyway, we're gonna call this one done. You know, oh, I'm exhausted. So we're gonna call this review done. And uh, I'm not sure what's going on. We got some. We got another new character coming in here pretty soon. You know, and. Uh, if anybody wants to get involved in this webcast, you know, come into the studio and we can bounce ideas back and forth in front of the camera for the audience and stuff like that, feel free to contact me. My, I always put the information below, you know, with, uh, with, uh, with the information about the movie that I'm reviewing on the comment box below in the info area. So you can call or you can email. And if you're interested in doing this, you can come in and we can just do some goofy stuff in front of the camera and ship it out, uh, the view it out to YouTube or Facebook and see if we can get some laughs on it and see if we can get some, you know, some feedback on it and stuff like that. You're more than welcome to. Just It might be better just to email me. I always put the email on the, the, info, in the info section of the, the webcast to review. So, so we're going to get going and you guys have a great time and uh, we'll see... Maybe you'll see me next time. Maybe you'll see one of the other guys. Later.